The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the God of every blessing, 
no place your love won't find us. Mercy is right behind us. I've seen it every time. What a good God, bringing me back to life. Open Good morning, everyone. Welcome to all of you, uh, wherever you may be on this uh, wonderful Memorial Day weekend, uh, a weekend where we remember and honor those who served and lost their lives. Um, and it's also Memorial Day, kind of a weekend where it's the beginning of summer and it's a time for families to gather, although this looks a little different now as we live in these unprecedented times. And uh, if you're here, obviously watching us, we invite you to just greet one another and maybe on your, the comments here, let us know you're here. Uh, give a little thumbs up, give a shout out to uh, your friends, your family. We're delighted that we can be with you here via uh, Facebook uh, and all other platforms uh, for today's worship. We begin as we always do in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And uh, today we'll, uh, we'll sing an kind of a song that we're familiar with, but kind of a contemporary uh, spin to it, A Thousand Tongues. We are a sea of voices, we are an ocean of your praise, gathered under we are a tide that's rising, and we cannot be contained. Gathered under one name, and oh, a thousand tongues to sing the glory of our Lord God Almighty. And oh, to sing the Savior's praise, the triumph of His grace. where sin was slain, we gathered under one name, where every chain is broken, and every sorrow swept away.
My mic isn't working? Okay. Ah, the fun continues. All right, one more time. Um, just to add a word of welcome to that that Mark gave earlier. Uh, delighted that God has called and gathered you to worship in this manner. Whether you're joining us live or watching the recording later on, we pray God will richly bless you through his word this morning. Because we're not able to gather here at the church, we're especially uh, grateful these days for our radio sponsorships. Uh, this morning, for our first service, that was given by Jill Atwood in memory of her mother, Doris Strand. So our thanks to, to her and to Doris's family for that gift to our outreach. Uh, a bulletin for the service, along with weekly announcements, can be downloaded from uh, the church website, or you can access that off the Facebook page as well. You know, at one time we had hoped uh, that we might be outdoors today, just as well that didn't work out. Uh, we'd have been chased away by the rain. It's not a particularly nice day for being outside today. But you've likely heard that uh, yesterday the governor eased restrictions on worship gatherings. It was too late to make any changes for this morning. Uh, but we will be meeting this week and weighing out all the options and trying to figure out uh, where we go from here. So. We don't have a firm announcement for you today, but please keep watching for information on uh, how worship will proceed next Sunday. In any case, it's a big festival. It's Pentecost Day. So whether you're home here or somewhere in between, uh, be sure to wear red and to gather for that major festival of the church. With the easing restrictions of the pandemic, the, uh, the church is unlocked weekdays now. So you can come in. We've got all sorts of material that you can pick up or to drop off an offering. Just stop in to say hi. Uh, so we'd love to see you. Um, for now, though, all of our online or almost all of our online offerings will continue. Daily faith encouragement, weekdays at 9 o'clock. The lectionary study on Tuesday at noon. Uh, morning prayer, Wednesdays at 6.30 in the morning, uh, plus content for children and families. Uh, speaking of rain, we had scheduled a cleanup out at St. Martin Cemetery a couple weeks ago. That got rained out, but it has now been rescheduled for next Saturday, May 30th, at starting at 8 a.m. So if you're able to help out with that, please do give us a call here at the church so we know uh, who is planning to be there. Uh, Mark mentioned earlier that this is a Memorial Day weekend, <coughs> and of course we do give thanks for all those who have uh, given their lives in defense of our nation and of other uh, people being oppressed, as we also pray that uh, God's peace will come and make such sacrifice unnecessary going forward. Well, I think those are all the announcements uh, that we need uh, to make. And this is a time when we're together that we invite you to rise and share the peace with one another. Well, of course, can't do that here. But last Sunday, we did invite people to uh, drive by and share the peace. Uh, so take a look at that. It fully sounded Invisible as mind and soul And yet of light The fountain Thy brightness shines 
climbs from pole to pole like beacons from the mountain. The love of faith, though it calls to you, and to the cross which makes us new, and by a grace here in this place, you have called to us the life of I apologize if that was a little glitchy. Some of our videos run smoothly and some of them don't on the live stream. We will post that on the church YouTube channel so you can see it in a, in a better format. But we're really <clears throat> thankful for all of you who came by to say, hey, it was great to see your bright, smiling faces. Uh, one of the things we did pass out was this little Faith Dur During COVID-19 uh, project where we're just trying to collect personal reminiscences and reflections on this time that we can archive for when future generations look back and wonder what this was like and what people were thinking and experiencing. So if you got one, please uh, fill it out and return it. If not, we got plenty here to pick up at the church, just a simple piece of paper, but we'd uh, really appreciate uh, hearing uh, all of your thoughts on that. At this time, though, uh, we continue our order of worship with Behold Him. He who was before there was light Walked across the pages of time He who made every living thing Behold him He who heard humanity's cry Left his throne to wake as a child He became like the least of us Behold him, Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the Roaring Lion. Oh, be still and behold him. He who 
dined with sinners and saints, healed the blind, the lost, and the lame. Even now he is in our midst. Behold him. He who chose a criminal's end, paid with blood to settle our debt, buried them to the rose to The line in that song that refers to the Lamb, the Roaring Lion, comes out of Revelation 5. And it's quite the contrast, actually. What's more gentle than a lamb? What's more fierce than a roaring lion? But in that chapter, the heavenly vision that's recorded there, both of those are Jesus Christ, risen and ascended, and now reigning over heaven and earth. And holding both of those images together is really at the heart of the Christian faith and the human experience. And especially as we gather now for confession and forgiveness of sin, both of those sides or portrayals of Jesus are at work. For on the one hand, God is fiercely angry at human sin, at the rebellion and the destruction the harm that results from it. But on the other hand, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world by his death and resurrection. And so as God's people called to faith in Christ, we come before the roaring lion and the Lamb of God in order to confess our sin, our need for salvation, but also to cling to that promise that the very same God who denounces our sin and judges us for it is the God who sent Christ to the cross to forgive us and to free us from it so that we might be reconciled to God and live with him forever. And so in the context of that amazing, almost paradoxical promise, I invite you now in a moment of silence to confess before God whatever sin or guilt is on your heart today, and then we will join in a common prayer of confession.
Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for us as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. And therefore, as a member with you of the priesthood of all believers, but by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, thanks be to God. Amen. Oh, your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able oh, I will sing of the goodness of God close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my I will sing 
The first reading today, the seventh Sunday after Easter, is from Acts, chapter 1, verses 9 through 17, and verses 21 through 26. Last Thursday was Ascension Day, when, 40 days after Easter, Jesus ascended into heaven, having been told to wait in Jerusalem to receive the Holy Spirit, the disciples used the time to replace Judas Iscariot as one of the twelve reading from Acts. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. In those days, Peter stood among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Continuing with verse 21. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and they said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in the ministry and apostleship from which Ju Judas turned aside to go on his own. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. The second reading today is from 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 12 through 17, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. The Christians to which Peter wrote were being persecuted for their faith. Peter distinguishes suffering for that cause from suffering for wrongdoing, and then urges his readers not to be tempted by their suffering to turn away from Christ. Who will sustain them through it? Reading from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. 
If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because of the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or even a mischief maker. Yet if any of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear this name. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. If it begins with us, what will be the end for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Continuing in chapter 5. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. And after you all have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. It's time for Face Seeds. Kids, come closer. I want to share with you a little story. Today I brought with me a recipe, and this recipe is for a hot German potato salad. I know that might not sound the best to you, but let me tell you, it is delicious. And this recipe is a recipe that was shared to me by my grandmother. So this card is very, very special to me. It's a card that I would not trade for anything because my grandmother is no longer here. She, she died several years ago, and so having this in her handwriting is so important to me. Um, in this recipe, it tells me how to make hot German potato salad, which has always been a part of our annual Christmas dinner. Yes, we had hot German potato salad, ham, fruit salad, and popcorn balls. Every year for Christmas, we would gather at my grandparents' house and um, share this meal with the family and, and just um, have presents and visiting and time to play with the cousins. And it, it's made a lot of memories. Um, so this recipe is very, very special. And it's something that my grandmother passed down to my mom and then my mom passed it down to me and one day I hope to pass it on to my kids and hopefully they'll pass it on to their kids and it'll become part of their Christmas tradition as well. So this reminds me of something that Jesus um, said in a prayer about his disciples once. In praying to his heavenly father, he spoke about how he had given the disciples the same words that the father, God, had given to him. Jesus passed it on also just like my grandmother passed on her recipe. Jesus was in touch with the Father and he listened to all that the Father had to say. And then he gave those teachings to men like Peter and Andrew and John and Matthew and others that we hear about in the Bible. These disciples and all of the other followers of Jesus learned the things that God wanted them to learn. Jesus was not just sharing some ideas or thoughts, but he was sharing the things that men had to know about the plans that God has for them and for all of us. We have learned about God's plans and his important teachings in the same way. For hundreds of years, thousands of years even, we have had the word passed on to us by reading Bible stories or sharing the word with others um, or even having faith seeds just like we are right now. Those teachings came from fa the Father God to Jesus, to Peter, and to hundreds of others until it finally came to you. 
This is a wonderful thing to know and a very important reason to listen carefully because someday you will be passing on to someone else what you've learned from me today. The next time you hear about a recipe, perhaps you'll think about a time that Jesus thanked his father for the words that he used to teach the disciples about the truth of God. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the kids and for all the families out there who are gathered today to share and learn about your word. And God, I thank you that you gave your words to Jesus who shared them with the disciples. And I thank you for the disciples who shared those words with others until the words finally got to us. And I thank you, God, for the Bible and for all the stories in it that tell us of your love and your plans for us. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming, guys. Have a great day. Let's prepare our hearts and mind for the word of the Lord. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You're a light unto my path. The Holy Gospel today is from John chapter 17, beginning at verse 1. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you give, gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. During our lectionary Bible study last Tuesday, one of the participants noted that this text from John 17 seemed to be out of place. I mean, this is the last Sunday of the Easter season. We've been basking in the good news of Jesus' resurrection for weeks already. And yet this passage takes us back to the night before Jesus was crucified. As he prayed for his disciples in the upper room. Well, that was a sharp observation, for this text surely is out of place chronologically. But the calendar of the church works on two different tracks. In some ways, it does follow the timeline of Jesus' life. But other parts of it are grouped more by topic. And this is one of those topical days. The subject at hand is the transition from Jesus' earthly ministry 
to the age of the church. Last Thursday was Ascension Day, as you heard, when Jesus returned to his heavenly glory after Easter. Next Sunday is Pentecost, when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit just as he had promised, and the church was born. And so this text from John 17 takes us back to the time just before his crucifixion when Jesus knew his earthly ministry was ending. And now for the previous four chapters in John, he had been preparing his disciples for this transition. And now in chapter 17, he concludes that crash course with a prayer. Praying to his heavenly Father but doing so out loud so that his disciples and we could overhear it and find strength and courage and comfort. That's why this chapter has long been called Jesus' high priestly prayer. Like the high priest of Israel, he was interceding with God for the sake of his people, asking God to bless and protect them. And as we listen in on this profound prayer, we can hear Jesus' deep concern for his disciples. And we can easily imagine their anguish and confusion and fear. Now I am no longer in the world, Jesus prayed, but they are in the world. Father, protect them in your name that you have given me. I mean, despite all his efforts to prepare them for his departure, Jesus knew that his disciples would have a rough time of it. And the Gospels report that they did. At the same time, though, Jesus' prayer also proclaims a great promise about his departure from this world. Father, glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. For as crucial as Jesus' earthly ministry had been, he knew that the final goal of it, to give eternal life to God's people, could only be achieved by his coming crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension back to heaven. In my daily faith encouragement devotion last Monday, I quoted from a sermon that Martin Luther uh, preached on Ascension Day back in 1523. And one of the main messages in it was that Jesus had to ascend back to the Father so that he could be near us. That may sound really counterintuitive. When Jesus ascended in heaven, he went away, didn't he? I mean, how could that help him to draw near to us? Strange as it sounds, though, it's true. When Jesus appeared to his disciples after Easter, his resurrected body had clearly changed. He could pass through locked doors and appear and disappear suddenly. And yet even so, he could still be in only one place at a time. But once he ascended into heaven and sent the promised Holy Spirit, then Jesus could be present in every place at any time. I mean, really, the only reason we can trust that Jesus is here now with us is that he went away into heaven. As Martin Luther wrote, Beware lest you imagine that Jesus has gone and now is far away from us. The very opposite is true. While he was on earth, he was far away from us. But now, he is very near. He is here with us. And for this purpose did he sit down in heaven that he might be near unto us. Thus we are with him up there, and he is with us down here. Through the word he comes down, and through faith, We ascend up. 
You see, together, Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, followed by the coming of the Holy Spirit that we celebrate next Sunday on Pentecost. Those events together fulfilled the prayer of Jesus in John 17. He prayed, glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. And that's exactly what happened when he died and rose again. It was Jesus' glory to die obediently on the cross to forgive sin and save the world from damnation. And because he did, God the Father glorified him by raising him from the dead. Jesus prayed, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory I had in your presence before the world existed. Well, that request was filled on Ascension Day as Jesus took his resurrected flesh into heaven so that our human reality is now directly known within the Godhead itself. Just as Jesus was sent from the Father, so he returned to the Father in order to bring abundant and eternal life to all who believe. And Jesus prayed for all his followers. Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. And God sent the Holy Spirit to do exactly that. To hold us and all Christians in abiding faith and to unite us in the one body of Christ, the church. I mean, there's no other way to account for the endurance of the church through the centuries and for our own abiding faith in Christ apart from the power of the Holy Spirit at work among us. In his high priestly prayer, Jesus not only poured out his heart to his heavenly Father, but he also proclaimed the good news of God's gracious love and his determination to save not only those disciples who were there in the upper room, but all the people since who have heard this earnest prayer through John 17. And to know that the risen and ascended Lord Jesus still intercedes for us before the throne of his Father in heaven is, I think, especially comforting in these strange days in which we're living. You know, in many ways, I think we're like those disciples in Acts 1, staring up into heaven and wondering what's next, and not at all sure how to proceed from here. I mean, some of you are just making do, as the disciples did when they found a replacement for Judas Iscariot among the twelve. They weren't at all sure of what the future held, but they tended to what responsibilities they could as they waited for the promised Holy Spirit to come. Others of you are frustrated or suffering, like the Christians to whom Peter wrote his letter, wondering where Christ is in all this mess. It might be that you're feeling the loneliness of separation from loved ones, or the death of someone dear to you without the blessing of a funeral. Maybe it's missing out on high school graduation and other key events in your life, or the anxiety of being thrown out of work. I mean, it may well feel as if, like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, is prowling around looking to devour you. Some of you may be plagued more by anguish and fear as were the disciples in the upper room as they listened to Jesus' prayer but weren't quite sure what it all meant. As restrictions enacted for the pandemic start to ease, the uncertainty about how best to proceed has in some ways only increased. I mean, trying to sort through all the conflicting information from the so-called experts is confusing and exhausting. To the point that it would start to seem easier just to 
all stay in our caves. But whatever the case, whatever the struggle, whatever obstacle or enemy, the promise and power of Jesus' high priestly prayer addresses you right where you are. For this is the word that it declares to you. Again today, God the Father is giving you over to Christ Jesus so that by his saving death, you might be forgiven and reconciled to God. And Christ your Lord is in turn handing you back over to God the Father so that you might receive from him everything you need for abundant life now and eternal life in heaven. And the Holy Spirit is even now blowing through your heart and mind to anchor you in faith and to empower you to live boldly and confidently amidst all of this tumult. So rejoice and give thanks. Take comfort and be confident. For Jesus, your Savior and Lord, went away into heaven so that he could draw near to you today and every day. The Holy Spirit is present with you to speak Christ's saving word into your heart and to build up your faith. And God the Father has graciously responded to Jesus' high priestly prayer so that now there is nothing in all of creation from the disruption of a pandemic to death itself that can prevent him from being your saving Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hear the voice of love that's calling There's a chair that waits for you And a friend who understands Everything you're going through But you keep standing at the distance shadows of your shame but there's a light of hope that's shining won't you come and take your place
There's a Savior and He calls. Bring it all to the table. Bring it all to the table. I invite you now to rise as you are able, wherever you are, as together we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please uh, be seated. At this time when we would normally uh, gather the offering and worship God with our gifts and tithes, well, we can't quite do that. We do encourage you, please, to continue to support the church as you've been doing so very generously uh, so that we can continue to do the ministry God's calling us to do during this time. But one of the gifts that's always offered during the offering is the gift of special music. And so now we uh, invite you to sit back and enjoy this gift from Mark and Tara. May my prayer like incense rise before you Lifting up my hands a sacrifice Jesus, turn your eyes upon me, for I know there is mercy in your sight. Your statutes are my heritage forever. My heart is set on keeping your decrees. Please still my she surged toward rebellion. Let love keep my will upon its knees. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God.
Let's bow our heads and hearts together in prayer. O Lord, our Creator and Redeemer, we listen in humility and awe to the high priestly prayer of your Son, Jesus Christ, as he went obediently to death on the cross for our salvation. Fill us with faith, hope, and comfort by the promise that he prays for us still before your throne as the Holy Spirit brings his saving presence into our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, heal all who are ill or recovering. Bless Rachel Johnson and Dick Ward, who are both hospitalized this week, and Alan Sharn in his upcoming surgery. Sustain those receiving treatments or who can't get treatment due to the pandemic. Strengthen them and their caregivers. And assure us all of your steadfast provision of all that we need for life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, comfort those who grieve the death of loved ones, especially Dan and Sherry Dreos and other family and friends of Arlis, and Marlis Miller as she mourns the death of her sister, Arlene Walter. Give them all hope and comfort by the promise of resurrection to eternal life in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for bringing Isaac Alexander Felber and Graham Keith Mayer into your eternal kingdom by holy baptism. Build them into your church, the body of Christ, that they and their families may be maintained in faith and obedience to your will all through their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, on this Memorial Day, we remember and give thanks for those who lost their lives defending our nation and oppressed people around the world. As we live through a time of great fear over illness and death, we marvel at the courage, dedication, and the bravery that drove them to give the last full measure of devotion. Lord, pour out your peace across the earth that there may be no more need for sacrifices like theirs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, it is so essential for us to receive your divine gifts of grace. We thank you that the ministry of your Church has been deemed essential and pray now that you would give us wisdom to us and to all your people as we discern how to gather again, both in safety and in joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these things, O Lord, the prayers that rise up from our hearts and those greater gifts that you alone know that we need. We pray all in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your children, so God. Cause your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. Peace and serve the Lord.